At this point, after your class exercise, you should be familiar with these three aspects of mutation. You should be able to take a piece of DNA, conceptually turn it into RNA, and conceptually translate it into protein. You should understand what happens to the protein sequence when the DNA is changed by a point mutation or by an insertion or deletion mutation. And so with that in mind, let us go on to our second topic today, which is called allele segregation. Okay, first thing we need to think about is what an allele means. And so let us write down on the board the first line, which is that an allele is a alternate form of a gene. Alleles can be called variants, and they may be designated relative to some reference DNA sequence, some reference gene that is called wild type. Although this is not done in humans, it's done in various other organisms. So variants, and let's say, may be relative to wild type. That may be your reference. Okay. Alleles are there because of different DNA sequences. That's the point. So an allele is due to DNA sequence variations or differences. We may not know them all the time, and we'll get to that in a moment. But we can designate how a gene's alleles look by this kind of notation. So for example, let's designate the apple gene, and it might have alleles apple big B, and maybe that gives you a green apple, or apple little b, and maybe that gives you a yellow apple. What is, how do these genes relate to the chromosomes that we talked about way back when? these collections of genes that form huge arrays in the cell and are how the cell's genes are organized. They relate like this. In a diploid cell, each of these alleles would be on the matching chromosome, would be on one of the matching chromosomes. So in diploid cells, 2N cells, each chromosome, CHR, pair, has the same or different alleles of particular genes. That is a little background to then look and see what we mean by alleles in a visual sense. One can look at flower color and see that flower color in a particular floral species varies enormously and these variations in flower color are due to different alleles of one or more genes encoding flower color pigments. Eye color, it's the same idea. Eye color comes from different alleles of the same genes that contribute to um, the color of our eyes. And Labradors, I have a black Labrador at home, but there's a whole array of different colors. Actually, there's really four colors of Labrador, and their color fur depends on particular alleles, again, of the pigment that makes fur color. So this is the notion behind alleles, and it is hugely important in understanding how life works. Let us continue thinking about the chromosomes and the alleles on the chromosomes. And we'll get a bit more visual here rather than just writing it on the board. So I want to talk here about cell division and allele segregation. During the process of mitosis, division of the body cells, the outcome cells, the daughter cells, have got exactly the same set of alleles as the parent cell, okay? There are some variations on this occasionally that can lead to disease, but by and large, 
during mitosis, the alleles that start off in the parent cell are the ones that land, off, land up in the daughter cell. So in the body cells, the daughter, the daughter cell has alleles equal to the parent, identical to the parent. And that actually is just another way of saying that mitosis gives identical daughter cells to the parent. We talked about that previously. We also talked about meiosis, the process that gives rise to the germ cells, the egg and sperm. These are also called gametes, and that's a term you'll need to know today, gamete. During meiosis, things get a little strange. And you remember from our previous discussion that you land up with four cells from every starting diploid cell. You land up with four haploid cells. During the process of meiosis, alleles can really sort themselves out. That is true even for just one chromosome. But when you've got lots of chromosomes, as in our cells, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, you can get all sorts of sorting out of alleles between the germ cells so that they don't look anything like the parental cell. Now I will write here that in the germ cells, in the gametes, the alleles segregate is the term. It means sort out such that the gametes do not have the same alleles as the parent allele set, let us say. OK? All right, so you not need to bear this in mind as we go through some visuals, because words do not show it as well as visuals. Here, to get us back into the frame of molecular biology, is the notion of alleles, that there would be the apple B gene that would have the particular protein sequence on the top of the slide, and the apple small b allele would have the protein sequence on the bottom of the slide. Okay, they're both apple genes, but they've got different DNA sequences and maybe some different function. Let's look at allele segregation during mitosis. This is also called somatic inheritance, body cell inheritance. We're starting off with a cell that has a pair of homologous chromosomes, just one pair, including the apple gene with its two alleles. DNA replication occurs, and you get duplicated chromosomes. Now, I've shown you on these chromosomes one of the homologues has the large B allele, and the other homologue has the little b allele. After DNA replication, the cell has now duplicated its chromosomes, and it has two big B and two little b alleles. But those segregate to the daughter cells so that each daughter cell looks just like the parent cell with a big B and a little b allele. Okay, that is mitosis, slightly restated from the way we did before, where now we're following the alleles, the variations of genes that are on homologous chromosomes, matching chromosomes. Okay, now we're going to look at meiosis, and you'll see things get a little different. We start again with the diploid parental cell, it undergoes DNA replication, and then meiosis I occurs such that the replicated homologs move entirely to each of the daughter cells. One daughter cell has two big Bs, and the other daughter cell has two little Bs after meiosis I. But then there's this process of meiosis II, where there's a second division, and you land up with four haploid cells. And you can see in my example that there are two kinds of gametes that come out here. Two of the gametes have got the big B allele, and two of the gametes have got the little b allele. That's different than the parent cell, 
And depending on whether that's an egg or a sperm, and depending on what the mating of the organism looks like, the outcomes of using the big B or the little b gametes are going to be different. We'll explore that a bit later today. And then let's get even more complicated and throw another chromosome in the mix because most organisms don't just have one chromosome, they have a number of them. So I've drawn you some schematics here where the parent has two pairs of chromosomes and on each chromosome there are two different alleles of a particular gene. There again is the apple gene with its big B and little b alleles, and there is the honey gene with its big H and its little h alleles. Okay, so that's what we're starting with in the parent cell. DNA replication occurs and you get the duplication of the whole array of chromosomes and all the alleles. In meiosis one, there is four possibilities for what might happen. Because these alleles, the chromosomes, segregate independently at this point. Big B, the duplicated Big B, can segregate with the little h chromosomes. Or it can segregate with the big H chromosomes. Little b can segregate with the little h chromosomes or with the big H chromosomes. Okay, this is a stochastic, it's probabilistic. After meiosis II, there are four kinds of gametes that have come out. I've drawn you four of them because each is duplicated. You can either be big B, little h, big B, big h, little h, little b, or big h, little b. Okay, this is what is meant by allele segregation how these different gene variants sort out. And how they sort out really dictates what the next generation of the organism is going to look like. And this is something that we have to bear in mind when we think about inheritance and we think about phenotypes and traits associated with inheritance. So I want you to go and do the class exercise associated with allele segregation now so that you can play around with understanding allele segregation. <laughs>